begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the crowning glory of all his saints, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. We gather to honor our Father. For many years, uh, the monks at St. Bede worked at the parish in Lad. I believe the parish itself was founded about 1893, uh, but I'm not sure when the church was first built. But the monks had served there for a lot of years, and when a man named Angelo Barra lost his wife to cancer, Angelo donated this statue of St. Benedict to the parish in Lad. Uh, Angelo's son, David, had been a student here at St. Bede, and it just it had a personal connection. Angelo was my neighbor when I was growing up, and so we were, we'd always been good friends, and so it has a personal connection to me, as well as connecting, once again, the people of Lad to St. Bede. Uh, and I know that their, their church is gone, but there is a piece of their church here, and they can always come here and see St. Benedict and pray. And so we want them to know they're not forgotten and their statue is valued and has a very prominent place here. I came to St. Bede in 1961. There was a statue of St. Bede, where St. Benedict is now. And I was impressed because people would come, look at the statue, stand and pray for a minute or a few seconds, and then walk away with a smile. And it seemed like a wonderful addition because it said something to us about who we are. St. Bede, unfortunately, suffered a broken nose because somebody thought it was fun to throw something at him and he couldn't be repaired. And so for a lot of years, all we had was a fountain shooting water, which really doesn't say a lot about us and who we are and what we're trying to be. And I looked at the prayer that we say in class, at every class, that says, may the rule of St. Benedict be our guide, and may the spirit of St. Bede stay with us forever. And I realized that it was really Benedict who belonged in the fountain. As a young man, Benedict went to Rome to study. It was an exciting place, but he decided that it wasn't for him, and he went off to be a monk. A strange thing for a person to do. But he went and he was becoming such a holy monk that people came to learn from him. Unfortunately, some of the people that came to learn from him thought he was too strict and they wanted to get rid of him and so they tried to kill him. If you look at the statue on the bottom, you see a crow and then you see a cup in his left hand with the snake in it. These monks who were tired of all his rules and discipline, and this is not to give anybody an idea about Mr. Moore, <laughs> decided that they would poison him. And as Benedict, the legend says, was about to drink from the poisoned wine, the crow came and knocked it out of his hand, and when it fell to the ground, the snake came out, and he survived. St. Bede himself was a monk who learned the rule of St. Benedict and that's how he was formed. And so it's appropriate that Benedict, his mentor, stands here to remind us of the rule and what it teaches us. In a little while, we'll go through a series of sort of petitions that will simply give you some lines from the rule, a sample of his wisdom. Patiently share in the sufferings of Christ. Show equal love to everyone. May we, May we grow in his wisdom. Show obedience to all. May we, May we grow, grow in his wisdom. As, as I would mentioned earlier, uh, St. Benedict wrote a rule, an adapted rule 1,500 years ago that Benedictine monks throughout the Middle Ages and up to the present day still follow. And so it's really his wisdom that teaches us how to seek God but it's a wisdom that's really just describing how to live the Christian life. And so in addition to monks, there's also people called oblates. And in fact, there's probably 50 times more oblates than monks who are simply lay people 
who read the rule of Benedict and gather together to study to see how they should live their lives. It's a small book that was written and passed down through the ages. Uh, it's actually very small and can be read in like an hour, an hour and a half. Uh, our students spend three weeks studying it as juniors every year. And all of those quotations on this paper were actually little quotations from the rule of Benedict. And the statue actually is not complete at this point because on his right hand next to the book is where he, in most of his statues, has a crozier. The crozier was broken a number of times in Lad, and when it, before it was brought here, the crozier, the top of the crozier was disintegrated. We've had the crozier rebuilt out of marble as the statue is, and later this month, uh, a man from Peoria is going to come and try to attach the crozier so that it will be complete. All covered, this is, this is actually phase one of a larger project where we're going to do some more work in this area uh, to make it more clearly a, a special place of, of prayer and remembrance. And I'm looking forward and hope that the next phases won't take us 15 years to get through each of those. But.